the last uh, part of this second phase of project one uh, is going to be adding some things to a few of these details you've already drawn. Uh, what this sheet is, is showing all the details that you've already done minus the notes you've already done. Okay, So the only notes you're seeing are with the additional items. So we're going to start up here just looking real quick at uh, two and three. On detail two, <clears throat> we've added the brick on the outside sitting on the brick ledge. Um, you don't have to detail it uh, a whole lot. You've got some things in here. This is some flashing and brick ties and stuff like that. You don't necessarily have to put that in here because it's not labeled, but do show the brick on the outside. This is a two by six load bearing wall, stud wall right here. So this is a two by six, two by six seal. Has a half inch anchor bolt and they occur every 24 inches on center. Uh, they don't specify a size on here for the anchor bolt on the note. It would be in the specs, uh, but use, um, use an eight inch just like on the uh, shear wall detail, an eight inch long with a little two inch leg coming off here. So eight inches, two inches. Um, that's an exterior wall. This would be an interior wall, again, two by six, I'm just showing the load bearing studs, and a half inch anchor bolt, 24 inches on center. Uh, we'll get in, when we get to the roof plan, we'll look a lot more at the load bearing walls and uh, how they work, but for now, just know, which most of you probably already do, that anywhere we have a load bearing wall, it's carrying weight, obviously, from above, and so it's going to be, or have to be, centered right on one of these footings that are running back and forth in the slab. A uh, non-load bearing wall would have a little, little bit of a beefed up concrete footing under it, but nowhere near this amount. Um, so that's the first two. And the others, we'll look at just these two together, if I can get them on the screen. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. These are 9 and 10 at the island, and then uh, some of the columns on the outside. Uh, what this is, is the steel column itself, 8x8, 8x8. This is a 6x6 six six detail. What we're doing is we're showing the columns now on that particular detail with some notes and a top view of the column itself right here and the base plate. It's got a plate down here at the bottom. The anchor bolts go through the plate down, way down into the uh, concrete itself. Um, they're not really giving you sizes for these anchor bolts. Again, they're in the specs. Uh, I would rather them be uh, right here, but they're not. Uh, but these are going to be, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think they were, I want to say they were 12, either 12 or 14 inches deep, and then 2 inches wide. I think it was 12 and 2, so 12 inches, 2 inches on all of these. Uh, but again, you're just looking at a top view or a plan view. This is the 8 by 8 tube steel column, 3 8 inch thick. This is uh, the base plate itself. It's 14 inches wide, 14 inches deep. The holes happen every 11 inches. And of course, that's an equal distance from each side. But that's where the anchor bolts go through, right here at all the corners, into the concrete. And then the column itself, this note right here tells us that it's welded. That's a weld symbol. This tells us it's a quarter inch fillet weld, what that means. And it's done um, all around. So all around this column, it's welded to the base plate. And then the base plate is just put on the anchor bolts. Anchor bolts are uh, tied on. One thing that's not on here that I want you to do, and you'll just have to remember this, <clears throat> this little, these sloped lines right here, this is the base plate itself. This little area where these sloped lines are, it's an inch. It's one inch from the bottom of this plate to this line right here on that concrete. Okay. And what happens is this part right, right down here is poured. <clears throat> the anchor bolts are sticking up. And then on top of that, what this is, is a one inch thick layer of grout. Just like you would use, like we think of mortar for uh, bricks, anything like that. It's a little bit different mix. It's a little stronger, obviously but it's that consistency. So this is a one inch thick layer of grout. So actually draw this in one inch up. It's one inch from the bottom of the plate to the top of the concrete. Label that as a one inch thick grout layer. Okay. And what that's used for is leveling. 
that's used to level the column. So if this surface right here is not exactly level, what happens is I put this one inch thick layer of grout, put my column down with my plate on top of it, and because I put that grout down and then put the column on top of it, it's still wet enough to where it'll let me level that column. And then I put my bolts on, and then the grout cures all the way, and I've got a good solid base that's level for that column. Okay, so again, one inch, and just label it as a one inch thick uh, layer of grout. <clears throat> and again, it's for leveling. Um, let's see. All of these are pretty self explanatory. Uh, it's just size of the base, what size anchor bolts are going through there, three quarter inch, and I told you they're 12 inches deep, two inches across. Um, this is just a note saying that the column size is different at similar condition. In other words, we're only showing this. If you look at both of these, this is 8 by 8, this is 8 by 8. Right in the middle here, we've just got a little separate plan view for a 6 by 6 column, and this is just saying that even when we're using a different column size, it's going to be installed the same way, is all it's saying. Um, and this is the exact same thing as we just looked at, with the exception of the base detail has changed. This is a now on the uh, footing and slab for the porch area, if you will, outside where the arrival hoods are. Um, so this is on the island, this is on the porch area, but the installation is the same. One inch thick layer of grout, 12 inches, 2 inches, plan view is identical. I'm not mistaken. I think it is. Yeah, it is. Um, so everything else is is the same. This is telling you it's two feet to the center of the column from the edge of the uh, slab. Um, so those are those two. And then the last one is the wood columns, where we are looking at the bases with the uh, standoff base. <clears throat> and this is where you could go to that Simpson Strong Tie site, actually download the CAD files for this particular standoff base, pop it in there, and you know it's accurate. These little triangles are just meant to represent the connectors, the nails, or the screws that they're using uh, to go through the outside of that standoff base into the wood column. Uh, but again, anchor bolt bolted there. That's the base that the actual wood column sits on, wood column going up. Um, and that is it. You're just adding those things to these five details, these three, these two, adding those additional elements to it. And that's really it for uh, sheet S3.1.